Good morning and welcome to Boz TED Ed Lectures. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about the importance of voting and how even one vote can really make all the difference. It's what we hear regularly people saying, I didn't vote because what does one vote matter? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how one vote really can matter. First of all, you may have noticed these statues in Leicester City Centre. We've got Gandhi on one side and we've got Alice Hawkins on the other side. What we have here is two very influential political leaders here who both recognised the importance of equality and both represented a group of people who were oppressed, who were un they were disallowed to have the voice and the vote at that point and they both fought uh, in one side quite peacefully, the other side using more violent means um, to get the vote for their people. Obviously in Gandhi it was the emancipation of the Indians at this point here and Alice Hawkins, the, the right for women to vote. So you can see there, Sister for Freedom, written below her, her plinth there. These two people very much inspired me to feel very proud every year that I vote because there have been people who have been unable to. My next video I'm going to show you now is the beginning of voting in South Africa and what you're going to see is a huge line and this line is the queue of people voting for the privilege, for the right to cast their vote for the very first time. For us, it wasn't just a political act, it was a deeply spiritual experience. You realize, you realize the power of what it, means, what it means to people who have never been allowed to vote in their lives and finally walk up and cast a vote. This world-class example of what democracy could be. There was a sort of a harmonious, synchronicitous coming together, a culmination of grace, all the work and sacrifice and suffering that so many people had done to make that day possible. It affirmed us, all of us. Um, again, I feel incredibly inspired to think that there are people who had to wait the majority of their life before they were able to vote. And this segues me back, actually back even further in time, back to 1784. Now here we have Thomas Jefferson, one of America's most influential political uh, people who actually um, was very heavily involved in trying to get slavery abolished. In eight, 1784, he, he'd come to the conclusion that he believed that slavery was not right and he actually wanted to free slaves and ban the, slave, the enslavement of all people in America. He put the, the, the draft together. Sadly, it was rejected by just one vote. That was it, one vote. At that point, had that a person had voted the other way or someone hadn't been ill that, that one day, the actual draft would have gone through. And by 1800, there would have been an emancipation of all slaves in America. Now, because this draft didn't go through, between 1790 and 1830, the American slave population skyrocketed to 469,757 people who had been born into slavery, who had spent their lives in slavery or had died in slavery as well. Can you imagine what that would do to your identity, completely stripped of your heritage, your name, where you came from, your family, separation. You have no voice, no rights at all. It wasn't until 1863 when slavery was thankfully abolished. 80 years later, you, know, you think about the lives that could have been changed in 80 years, almost a century there, of people who were controlled and owned by the white community in America. And it was four million people who actually had to be freed. Four million people that were owned by someone whose names had been stripped of them, who had been given their slave owner's name as their surname, who were unable to have a family to get married to, have any kind of rights, but may not even be able to read or write. Um, it took two years to actually free all the people because, as you can imagine, a lot of the slave owners were not keen to actually let go of their free labour. So the army had to be drafted in to make sure it really happened. But it did happen. But I can't help but think about that one vote, that one vote that would have made all the difference. So if you are eligible to vote this year, please, please do register because you never know what your one vote is going to contribute towards and who is going to get into office. You know, Thomas Jefferson, a great man in office, just sadly didn't have the support behind him that would have made a massive difference for people living in his country. 
looking a bit more further forward, Brexit. So I know probably think you're quite sick of hearing about, but looking down at the breakdown of actually the voting. So it wasn't exactly one vote, but you can see here, looking at Leave, looking at Remain, you know, it is relatively quite close, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm looking at not on the electoral register, the people who are not registered to vote. Look at the amount that's there. And then look at did not vote. So people who just said, oh, well, my vote doesn't matter. If those two groups of people had voted, we would have seen a significant majority, perhaps, either the Leave or the Remain camp. You know, part of our problem about Brexit has been the fact that people have felt that it's far too close, too much of a equal, more equal split as to Leave or Remain. But had those people who just didn't bother to vote, who just thought, well, it's only one vote, what does it matter? Had they voted, it could have made a massive difference. Now, next month is the American presidential elections. I think it's an incredibly important election and I hope desperately that all those who are eligible to vote in America do and I hope that they really educate themselves as to who to vote for. But think about who you are going to vote for in the next few years when you are. If you're going to be turning 18 this year, it's, it's your, you have the right to vote. If you're in year 11, you're going to be voting in the next few years. So really do find out which party represents you. Think about how you've been treated over COVID. How have you, which other parties done for you and who do you really firmly support? Because that one vote matters. Think about those people in South Africa who queued for hours to vote. You know, we are so lucky and so privileged to be able to do that. So I leave this point here. Vote for the party that really does speak to you, that you agree with. And don't think my vote doesn't matter because you never know what your one vote really could do. Thank you very much. Have a great day.